The sky turned black at noon, not from clouds or smoke, but from billions of living creatures moving as one organism. Farmers in Somalia watched helplessly as their rice fields, 247,000 acres, the equivalent of all of New York City, disappeared in hours. Ethiopia lost 50,000 tons of grain, enough to bake 100 million loaves of bread. Kenya saw 170,000 acres of crops stripped to bare stalks. This wasn't war, this wasn't drought, this was 200,000 tons of desert locusts moving 90 miles per day, eating enough food for 35 million people every single day. The world sent millions in aid. Scientists shipped a miracle fungus that could theoretically kill 90% of the swarm in 10 days. It all failed. Then East Africa did something that shocked everyone. Something so counterintuitive it seemed insane. They decided to eat their enemy. And somehow it worked. Africa's population sits at 1.5 billion people today. In just 25 years, that number jumps to 2.5 billion, four more people every second. Yet right now, 307 million Africans face chronic hunger. That's one in five people, roughly 11 times the global average. In Sudan, once called the breadbasket of East Africa, over 8 million people teeter on the edge of famine. Another 638,000 have literally nothing to eat each day. Move south to Ethiopia, Kenya, and Somalia, and the situation looks equally grim. This region used to be agricultural paradise. Fertile basalt soil, the deep blue Nile, abundant fresh water from Lake Victoria. So what transformed this resource-rich area into a landscape of desperation? War and conflict turned productive fields into wastelands. A quarter of all harvested crops rot because there's no cold storage or reliable roads to transport them. Each year, $100 billion gets spent importing food that could theoretically be grown locally. Over the last four decades, rainfall dropped by more than 15 percent. Temperatures climbed almost 3 degrees Fahrenheit, triggering five consecutive years of drought and converting millions of acres into desert. Then nature decided to add one more test. At the end of 2019, hot winds from the Arabian Desert collided with extreme rainfall over the Indian Ocean. These conditions created the perfect breeding ground for a tiny creature with an outsized impact, the desert locust. Each individual measures about two inches long. When they swarm, they become one of the fastest natural destroyers on Earth, capable of flying over 90 miles in a single day while obliterating everything green in their path. Scientists call them nature's perfect plant-eating machines. They never tire. They respect no borders. They ignore seasons completely. Desert locusts appeared in the Bible as Egypt's eighth plague. 3,000 years later, they returned, stronger, faster, and more terrifying than ever. In the cracked, dry sands of Somalia and Ethiopia, millions of locust eggs hatched quietly. Each female lays between 150 and 200 eggs. Within weeks, the sky transformed into a storm of wings. Massive swarms moved like black clouds, blocking sunlight and drowning out all other sounds with the roar of billions of beating wings. According to United Nations data, a locust swarm covering just 0.4 square miles, about half the size of Central Park, consumes enough food for 35,000 people daily. The scale of destruction was biblical. Entire communities watched their future food supply vanish as if fields had been burned, except nothing was left behind, not even ash. The world finally mobilized. The Food and Agriculture Organization, working with the British government, sent what they called a green weapon, Metarhizium acridum, a specialized fungus that kills locusts without contaminating soil. In theory, this was the perfect biological solution. A single drop could spread across miles, targeting only locusts while leaving everything else unharmed. But theory collided with East African reality. The fungus requires storage below 40 degrees Fahrenheit to remain viable. Many areas in Kenya, Ethiopia, and Somalia lack reliable electricity. One in three storage sites consists of nothing more than a tin shack in the desert. The inevitable result, hundreds of batches died before deployment. The FAO estimates that properly applied, the fungus could reduce locust populations by 90% in just 10 days. In reality, billions survived, multiplied, and after one rainy season, spread across an area 400 times larger. People stood powerless against these insects. After months of watching crops devoured, a desperate idea took root. If they couldn't kill the locusts, maybe they could eat them instead. 
It sounds absurd until you remember the context. This is Africa. Everyone already faced extreme hunger. Communities here have long histories of eating caterpillars, crickets, and beetles. When survival is at stake, anything edible becomes a lifeline. A quiet experiment began. People started collecting locusts, drying them, grinding them into protein powder. They mixed it into porridge, baked it into bread, combined it with grain flour. Simple preparations that kept entire villages from starvation. In Kenya, Uganda, and Ethiopia, communities began calling them the green gold of the desert. When scientists analyzed the nutritional content, they found something remarkable. Locusts contain twice as much protein as beef. In 3.5 ounces of dried locust, there's 1.6 to 2.6 ounces of pure protein. Chicken provides only about 1.2 ounces, beef around one ounce. According to FAO data, one pound of locust delivers as much protein as two pounds of beef while requiring only one-tenth the water and land to produce. They're also packed with iron, zinc, calcium, and omega-3 fatty acids, nutrients that hundreds of millions in East Africa desperately lack people began recognizing the value and started hunting more aggressively, not just to protect crops but to fill stomachs. Perception shifted. Locusts transformed from agricultural pest to mobile resource. This spawned a startup called The Bug Picture. They understood their enemy's weakness. Locusts are cold-blooded. When temperatures drop below 68 degrees Fahrenheit after sunset, they slow dramatically and become nearly motionless. That's when humans strike. At night in villages like Garissa, Isiolo, and Lodwar, hundreds of people emerge with sacks, plastic buckets, and flashlights to hunt locusts. In the flickering desert darkness, hands move quickly, grabbing insects and tossing them into sacks that rattle like hail. The bug picture pays 50 Kenyan shillings per kilogram, about 35 cents. One person can earn 30 to 50 dollars in a single night, nearly matching a month's wages for a local farmer. At their Nairobi facility, Locusts undergo washing, sanitization, drying, and grinding into pure protein powder. A ton of fresh locusts costs about $460 to collect. After processing, its value increases five to seven times. This powder serves not just as human food supplement, but as premium ingredient for animal feed. Across East Africa, over 80% of livestock, cattle, goats, chickens, still graze naturally. The problem extends beyond human hunger, Animals were starving too. Land grows increasingly barren. Grass withers under relentless sun. Herds of skeletal cattle wander miles searching for water. With rainy seasons becoming unpredictable and pastures unable to recover, livestock died in massive numbers. Kenya's 2022 drought alone killed 2.5 million animals, causing losses exceeding $800 million. Then locust powder appeared as miracle feed. Kenyan and Ethiopian labs began testing it in animal diets. Results were extraordinary. Cows produced 20% more milk. Chickens laid 18% more eggs. Baby goat mortality dropped nearly 30%. An FAO study showed every ton of insect powder could replace one and a half tons of fish meal, saving millions in annual imports. The cycle closed beautifully. Locusts feed people. People feed livestock. Livestock feeds the community everything connects. A few years after the locust pandemic, or rather the locust harvest, people realized the insects had nearly vanished due to intensive human collection. Not extinct, but drastically reduced. Crops recovered. Fields of wheat, corn, and millet turned green again. But a new paradox emerged. Harvesting crops became less profitable than catching locusts. For people in Garissa or Turkana, one night of locust hunting could earn triple what a week of farming provided, this sparked ideas about farming locusts in controlled environments, providing stable protein sources instead of depending on nature's unpredictable cycles. What seemed practical worried FAO experts. They warned that a single broken panel, one small system gap, could release millions. Even a modest farm could generate a new swarm covering 40 square miles, roughly 24,000 football fields, in weeks. That would transform from natural disaster to man-made catastrophe. Then came the most surprising discovery. After tons of locusts were ground into protein, the leftover shells, wings, and dried bodies weren't discarded. They were recycled into natural organic fertilizer rich in nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, the three fundamental elements of plant life. 
According to the bug picture, one ton of locust remains produces nearly 900 pounds of fertilizer, enough to restore about two acres of depleted soil. In dry regions like Isiolo, Garissa, and Turkana, farmers tested what they jokingly called insect fertilizer on their cracked fields. Something incredible happened. After just one season, yields jumped 35%. Soil retained twice as much water. Wild grass began growing again after years of drought. Before, we bought chemical fertilizer from Nairobi for over $100 per bag, explained farmer Hassan Ali. Now I just use what nature gives for free. No chemicals, no waste. Everything nourishes life. Environmental experts call this Africa's green cycle. Everything gets used. Locusts become powder, become food, then return to earth. A perfect circle where destruction's symbol becomes rebirth's seed. This story spread globally. Within years, Africa's crazy experiment became worldwide trend. The European Union officially approved locust protein in food by 2021. Netherlands and Switzerland supermarket chains started selling insect burgers with 40% protein, nearly double regular beef burgers. Technologies once confined to laboratories became a $3 billion global industry expected to triple by 2030. But few realize this story began in Africa, where people once starved, feared, then learned to transform disaster into life. Places once devastated by locust storms now symbolize nature's rebirth. They converted disaster into hope, enemies into resources, despair into future. That's it for today, folks. See you in the next video.